This is take two of the electric bicycle. I did want to show this shot just because it shows the uh, the GoPro here, which is attached. Um, I'm going to be using this GoPro to do some close-up shots, so I want to show it first. This is a really lame thing from GoPro. You can see they have a plug that goes into the GoPro, and then there's just a cord with no way to attach this microphone. So I have this really cheesy Velcro for now, just holding it in place until I figure out a better idea. Okay, so the first thing is I cleaned up the wiring. So this is just a plastic baggie. I just put it over the connectors in case there's water being spewed or it rains or what. It's California, so there's not a lot of rain, but maybe a sprinkler's going off or something. It's not the best thing. I, I definitely plan on upgrading that at some point, but just some kind of like covering for that. This is a bag that holds a battery for the temperature sensor, which is in this box. And this box took me a while to figure out, like the perfect box, and it's still not perfect actually. I wish it was a little bit more narrow because my knees don't hit it, but occasionally I'll kind of bump into it. So it's a little bit wider than I want, and there's still a little bit of room there. I could make it a little bit thinner, as you can see over here. There's a just a you know USB battery stick, and then the, this, this plugs into that. It is 74 degrees Fahrenheit and 23 degrees centigrade Celsius. Uh, and I just put in that little Fuji LM35. LM35 is the type of temperature sensor. I actually routed the wires down this way and then it goes down the other end and goes into the motor. So you can't see because there's electrical tape there, but underneath the electrical tape, these are the wires. They go, I drilled a hole inside the motor on the bottom. It was not there before, so I put the electrical tape to keep out dirt and water. Um, and I did that because I could have gone in through the other way, but there was silicone and all kinds of stuff that I didn't want to deal with um, through this panel here. And there's, the other motor wires go in that way. They go in through the back, and then there's a little place where it goes through, and then they go through silicone so the water and dirt can't get through, and then it goes to the other side. But it was just really hard to get everything in there, and I didn't want to like pull out all the silicone and mess anything up and rip a wire or something. So I did it this way instead, where I just um, you can see that the wire is going in there. There's a hole that's drilled. It was really easy to drill, actually. It just took like a black oxide drill bit, and I just started with the smallest one and went progressively bigger, and it worked really well, actually. The whole idea is just not to go above 80 degrees Celsius, which, believe it or not, it gets really hot really fast. I tend to only go up to level assist 8 out of 20, and that seems to be pushing the limits already. So sometimes I go to 10, but definitely like 20, like full speed, the motor would burn up in no time. And I actually used the existing LM35 in the motor. I bought a little clip and soldered it onto the wire, a little JST... Um, I forget the exact, t you know, version of the JST plug, but it's a really, really small one. But it went into the existing wire, into the existing temperature sensor that was installed by the person who sold me the motor. And so it's a really clean install. There's no extra, like, glues or anything required. And it just worked really well. And this is an Arduino. It just had the USB power going through a hole, and I also was able to feed in the GPIO pins through there. So it goes into the Arduino. You get the, the positive, negative, and signal from the LM35, and then you get the, uh, the wires for the LSD, uh, LCD, <laughs> not LSD, although it is blue. Um, and so basically that's how it works. And there's some code um, you can find online how to do an LM35 temperature sensor, and it works perfectly. I did have, I was plugging and unplugging a lot to like get the casing right and everything. So I actually did have to reinstall the the programs on the Arduino a couple times. I guess it just like you know, shorted out or something. But anyway, that's how you do that. And um, let me try to do this with one hand. I don't know if I can. So again, when you want to turn the temperature sensor off, you just unplug this, and it goes off. And then the, I could put a switch, but you know, then when you plug it back in, this goes right back on. And there it is. Uh, also, I tried to put on a double chain ring. You notice I took off the derailleur. 
This is actually the derailleur clamp that you would use, and I left it on just so I can hold the wire, the cable, in case I decide to put the derailleur back on for some reason. So I had to break the chain, I had to get a missing link from KMC to, to put the chain back on and connect it again. And so the cable's there, but the reason why I left the stock, I really wanted a double chain ring, but I left the stock 42. What I noticed was happening was um, the, the derailleur is just the perfect length for the crank, but because of the chain angle, because this is further out onto the outside, when I had a 34 tooth chain ring on the inside, it just kept going inward and kept falling off. And I think it's just because there was less tension because the derailleur just had less tension because it was a small chain ring. And this is a 42 versus a 34. So it just didn't stay on and it was gonna be more problems than it's worth. And to be honest, I've been testing this and it works pretty well with the 42. Like I don't really feel like I'm ever working too hard or I don't feel like I have, I've gone really fast down hills and I don't feel like I have, I'm missing anything by having a larger chain ring or a smaller chain ring. So the 42 really does work. I really wanted to try it. The double chain ring, but, and then also the derailleur didn't quite work right because I have road shifters. And um, for those of you that know that the shifting cable, the cable pull amounts are really dependent on the shifters and not the derailleur. And these shifters are designed for road, it didn't work, nothing really worked at all. It just basically didn't work at all. Um, so I just went back to the single chain ring, which was a little disappointing, but it is what it is. Kinda, I kind of ended up putting the water bottle down here. Like I said, one of the reasons I like this bicycle in particular is it has mounts everywhere for cages and peripherals and stuff. I wanted to reserve this for, um, for like front racks but it just what happened was I put it I attached the water bottle bracket to this and this is attached to the handlebars so and there's just no room anywhere to put any other brackets so because it was already on a bracket attached to another bracket I bought a little thing that clamped on that had water bottle mounts but it was the water bottles too heavy and it just kept going down and just didn't work um, so that just was not a good idea just not optimal So I kind of tightened everything up. I have the computer, um, the computer switches, and then I did reroute some of the wires, as you might see here. Um, I have the light thing, and the, I hooked up the throttle, so it's in the perfect position to grab the, with the thumb, and it works really well actually when it's there. It's kind of a good spot. I actually haven't used it. I use I mostly I stand the drops. So that worked really well. I was really happy about that. I have my GoPro remote control, just Velcroed around. I cleaned up all the wiring significantly. Also, you may notice these things. I was gonna do the cutting through the housing and have the through wires, but there's just a magnet. It's an e-brake sensor. And then this is this, the magnet sensor part. And it just goes through a wire into the, the one, one to four splitter. The throttle also goes through. And uh, so now I have the two e-brake situations and um, the throttle, which is really nice. Um, I did, the whole purpose of having the throttle in an electric bicycle is if I get injured or if I can't pedal for some reason, I wanna have a throttle. And it's not super powerful, but it's enough to where I would get home. And once you actually get some speed going, it's good. It just doesn't really go up hills very well and it doesn't really go from a standstill that well. So that's the only issue. Uh, I added this computer, which has, um, Altitude, so I don't know that's the trip distance. This is altitude profile. It has, um, whoa, what was that? That's interesting. Trip distance. Let me see what that was. Oh, interesting. That's like a, oh, that's really cool actually. It shows the gradient and the feet that you're at. I didn't even notice that. Um, so we're currently at 134 feet above sea level, 0% gradient because I haven't been moving. Um, and then the you know amount go, you went up and the maximum altitude reached. So and then there's the other stuff that's distance, ride time, average speed, max speed, clock, temperature, uh, section time, and section distance. Oh, and trip distance. 
Oh, that's where we started the trip distance. And there's the, this is for the um, additional computer. There's just a magnet on the on the wheel somewhere. Where is it? There it is. That's the magnet for that other computer. The speed sensor. There's, remember, I was complaining about the kink in the wire. It just goes straight now. I also used to have them in here, and I just thought that was a bad idea, so I put everything underneath. So there's really zero chance now that anything could be crimped or cut or anything. It just goes right into the motor down here. This kickstand, it just doesn't feel that stable, just mostly because of the disc brake, because I just can't, I just don't have the room to put it anywhere else. I used gaff tape for now. I haven't thought of a better way to do this, but I bought new gaff tape because my old gaff tape was really getting gooey. This is actually the old gaff tape, and this is the new one. Much, it's much better. And gaff tape is great, as people might know, because there's no residue, and you can just take it out. But it still stays really well, and it's still cloth-based, so it's really strong. It's kind of like duct tape without the goo. So yeah, water bottle brake sensors they work really well um, if they came away too far from the brake magnet then there might be a problem but I haven't noticed too much of that uh, everything on the dash nice clean wiring temperature sensor and a nice waterproof box there is one hole obviously here that maybe I'll put some electrical tape or something to keep some major dirt and water out but it would have to get pretty full for anything short out or anything so I don't think that's an issue and those are the upgrades. No double chain ring, still disappointed about that. And that's it.